what in the world was Billy Frampton thinking here? He's just totally cleaned him up and this is the easiest call for an umpire, front on contact. It was probably going to go through for a goal anyway, but this just seems really dumb. Running into screen. 3v2, 4v2, they were the ones who were scrambling quicker. The Pies trying their best to get back, but a turnover in the middle of the ground, an errant handball to Nick. The security guards at the Adelaide Oval are definitely not going to be in the 100 metre sprint at the next Olympics. You can just see they're so slow. For some reason, they've got their back turned to the crowd so they can watch the footy, not the crowd. And I guess that's why this guy got over. But anyway, uh, I think he got a three year ban and just, yeah, don't do this. This is dumb. This was pretty funny by Shrey. You can see he flips the coin and he looks up in the air as if it's staying up in the air. This is pretty good. I don't think I've seen this before. Pretty funny. Probably one of the goals of the game that killed Collingwood's chance of coming back. Do you think this one was out of bounds? I think everyone just heard BT say, That was out of bounds! That was out of bounds! So many times. So I won't make you relive it, even though I just kind of did. Watching this from this first camera angle, I definitely thought this was a 50 meter penalty against Tom Lynch. But after watching the replay from the other angle, do you think this was enough contact to the head or even to the body to be a 50 meter penalty? I think the only thing that really hurt him is Lynch is very late to the contest. The mark's pretty much taken, he's almost got his feet back on the ground before he makes contact. But do you think this is enough to be a 50 meter penalty? After watching the second camera angle, no. I don't know what sort of tackle Mark Blitzars has been training, but this is not it. Gives away a 50 meter penalty, very strange. Almost odd, you could say. And a 50 meter penalty as well. Kolodzhesny again, he gave the other one away I think as well. Take a listen to what BT says here. I have absolutely no idea what he's talking about. He's talking about fishing and nets. I don't know. I'm not a fisherman, but come on, man. What the hell are you talking about? Look at that. It's like a massive net. It's like a prawning net. Jay Bird, I don't know whether you've ever been on the banks of the Swan and tried to catch prawns in a drag net, but that's what it looks like. We'll get a look at it later. Here's Puffett. This one is an absolute coach killer. Somehow, Reef McInnes is finds himself in the Ford 50 all by himself. The ball goes over the pack mark and it just falls in his lap. I'm sure in the coach's box there was nothing nice said about this play. Was the speed in which they went forward? Yeah, and we saw it just then. Jamie Elliott was the first, last person in the line that took the mark. You don't see Darcy Moore make too many mistakes and especially not in the first quarter. Somehow he just handballs this to Hill and he takes the advantage and kicks the goal. The Pies are in big trouble. Guthrie cleverly takes the ball and hits the point post that's the throw in. And you can see everyone else is sort of stopped except for the umpires. The umpires haven't blown the whistle so it's kind of like it's play on but everyone knows it's not. So everyone just sort of stands around just waiting for the umpire to do something. How good's this fake handball by Finn Lason? He fakes one and he actually trips his defender right in front of him as well. Really nice fake and somehow this curves back for a goal. In another play, Finn Lason's going for goal and he sort of snuck his way out to widen the angle and then he just completely shanks the kick anyway. The Pies had a night to forget and Frampton yet again just does Frampton things and he handballs it straight into Darcy Moore's face. What in the world are these guys doing at the moment? This was really well done by the umpires. You can see in live speed that you're not entirely sure who the ball comes out of. The umpires also don't know. They don't have the privilege of watching the super slow-mo to see whose foot it came off last. And they do the right thing. They come together and they can't say for sure whose foot it came out on. So in the end, it's a throw-in, which is the right decision. So you're not certain? You're not certain? We have to throw it in. That's a correct decision, just like the ball. This is probably one of the most impressive kicks I've seen so far this season. You can see Ollie Henry marks the ball in 50 metres. You can see Dempsey's running towards goal and he just hits him perfectly on the chest. This is probably a 60 metre kick and he's just absolutely nailed this kick. Well done. The end of it, driving ball here, good direction to Henry. Ollie Henry to wheel and go, got the one out with Cameron over the back is Dempsey. The Higgins kick was probably a little bit closer. It, 
almost was in, it almost was out, you weren't quite sure. But this one is completely out, but somehow Lankford is able to continue to play on. You can see the Sydney defender slows down because he knows it's out of bounds, but somehow he was able to play on. What is even going on with the umpires at this point? Very, very out to us, and by that replay, I think it confirms it was very, very much out of bounds. And the fans who are down behind us... Just as equally impressive as DBJ's goal was the Falcon that Tresais gets. He's not able to get his hands up, and in the end it just Falcons him. Comes down, DBJ through for a goal. The target. Nervous moments for Tresais. Volley through. Luke Jackson has a early contender for mark of the year. What do you think? Do you reckon this will make the top 10? It's probably a little bit early to call, but there will probably be better stuff throughout the year, I reckon. Hooks it a touch left. Oh. Big fly, Jackson. Nice highlight early. Jared Witts had the Falcon of the Week last week, and this week it goes to Rowan Marshall. Just straight through the fingers and straight on the noggin. I can imagine that bandage got in his eyes, but it doesn't look like it has. It's in Kilroy. Oh. It's quite humorous. Only 50 seconds in and we get the first shank. This is just a terrible kick inside the corridor. You have to make sure you hit this and he's just completely shanked it. There's two crows either side of Peddler and Taylor Walker leading to him with no man on him. And what do you do? You kick it inside the forward 50 trying to be selfish and kick a goal. In the end, Taylor Walker gives him a massive spray which is well deserved in my opinion. Just really poor team play. The crows also have issues. How's the slips catch by Taylor? He probably should have been in my Brownlow votes looking back at this game, but this mark here was absolutely awesome. Very surprising that there wasn't much more talk about this, but you can see Toby Green actually goes up with the foot out, the studs up, and it's not a free kick. He does make contact with the other player. It's not very forceful contact, but he does still make contact. What do you think? Should this have been a fine or a free kick at least? Should have this been paid a mark to Tim Taranto? He probably had it long enough, but I don't know if he was holding it enough, if that makes any sense. What do you think? Is this a mark? How's this tackle from where? Chesser tries to throw him around and push him on the ground, but he just holds on for dear life and gets called for holding the ball. Great tackle. Massive collision here between Papley and Laverde. You just love it when the two guys go really hard at the ball and just have eye, nothing but eyes for the footy. So well done to them. What are your thoughts? Should have this been a free kick or is it fair play? Zerk Thatcher fakes not once, not twice, but three times on the handball. So much so that he kind of fakes himself out. It's a little bit tongue in cheek. And that's it for this week. Thank you very much for watching. Just a quick little reminder that if you do want to support the channel, you can become a member of the channel. It's only a very small amount per month, but it does help me out massively. So I do appreciate everyone who currently is a member. You can see them on the screen. Cameras, Sean Ducks, Austin Flex. I'm not sure how to... Oh, Availing Tuna. Is that how you pronounce it? Let me know. And Reroar. Thank you so much to you guys for being members of the channel. If you want to shout out in these oddity videos, be sure to become a member and I will start to shout you guys out. Thank you so much and I'll see you next week.